Okay, so number 21 through 24, there's a lot going on with these work-wise for sure without a calculator. So what I did is I graphed this inequality. I have a solid graph, a solid line, no dashed lines because I have this equal to piece right here. And then it's, four, it's shifted four units horizontally to the right, okay? Now from here, we have all of these piecewise functions, like this is my f of x or my function, and this is like the domain as far as where I would graph that function. So the domain is all here and the function here. And the same thing over here. We learned piecewise functions not too long back. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to match up which one matches with the graph that is represented from that equation right here. Okay, so y equals mx plus b definitely comes into play very handy right here because all of these, what you could do is just like, for instance, let's do letter A. We could make it y equals a 4 minus x, which if I put it in y equals mx plus b form, it's just going to be a negative x plus 4. And then the second one here, it is an mx plus b form, so I'll just put it as x minus 4. Okay, so this first one where the y-intercept is 4, and the slope is negative one, it does in fact, let me circle it, this one right here does in fact look like it's representing just this piece. And it's saying the domain is from x's that are less than four. So this will exist when x is less than four. So to the left of this x equals four, that's what we're gonna graph this function, which in fact, it does match up, okay? So now let's move on to our second one right here. Y minus four comes from this one, the second part of A. And it's saying that we will graph this everywhere where it's greater than or equal to four. So from four to the right, that's where we're gonna graph this Y intercept of negative four, which if this graph did keep going on forever, it would in fact cross at negative four as far as a Y intercept and it has a slope of one. So A does work out so far for sure. Okay, so let's circle A because that looks like it's the answer. Let's go ahead and prove the other ones to make sure that in fact it is the answer. So let's go to B. B has, again, I'm just interpreting them as lines, Y is equal to X minus four, which is this piece right here. And it's saying where x is less than or equal to 4. So it's saying in this domain right here, we need to graph this. That doesn't make sense because if we did graph that, it would be way down here. Okay, we wouldn't even have this absolute value piece. All of this would be gone and you would be way down here. But that's not what we were given to graph. So we already know it's not going to be B. Looking at C, we have x minus 4 where x is... Um, less than four. So this is a lot like B right here. We know that C is not going to exist. And then D. Let's look at the first one. Y is equal to four minus X. It looks a lot like A, like that first piece. But it's same, um, let me rewrite this first of all in Y equals MX plus B form. So that's negative X plus four. So the Y intercept is four with a negative one slope. So far so good and it's where x's are less than four. And yes, that looks like it could work. Let's check out the second part of D. So this is gonna say y's that are greater than or equal to x minus, oops, y's that are equal to x minus four. And sure enough, I'm looking and it does match up a lot like A. So now by process of elimination, I see that we have to look at are these inequality symbols and where they're exactly shading. Are they shading above or below the graph? So in the original one up here, we wanted to shade below the graph. So D is not gonna be the correct answer because D would say to shade all the way up here above the graphs where A said shade below. So A in fact does work out. Let's move on to number 22, okay. So number 22 is asking us to solve 
uh, or what is the solution of this inequality? Okay, so what is the solution of the inequality? It didn't say, even though it says solve, or sorry, even though it says solution, it's not asking us to solve just for an X, because if it did, it would be a number line answer where we have either a conjunction or where we could have just points. We've done many of these in class, or we could have a disjunction as far as them going opposite directions. But it's neither of those because then Y would have been a number because when you have these conjunctions, disjunctions, or points, you only have one variable and it's X. Okay, but that's not what we have here. We have y and x. And just like we talked about in class, we're going to graph the xy coordinate plane when we have both of those um, um, variables. So let's go ahead and go to drawing a graph. Okay, so this looks like it was shifted 5 over to the right because everything with the x is opposite, and then 2 up because everything outside the x, we follow the rule. I don't see any reflections vertically or horizontally, so it's still going to be looking up. And now this Y right here says we're going to shade all the Ys that are greater than, a.k.a. above this graph. So that's what the graph for number 22 would look like. And the solution is basically everything that you see. The only thing that we have to do is we have to change this li these lines to dashed lines. Okay, because this is strictly greater than. It's not greater than or equal to. So this would be dashed. This would be dashed. And then all the shading here is what you would have. So this entire graph is the solution to that inequality. All right, let's move on to number 23. 23, we are going to scaffold some of those solutions or systems of equations that we did last unit. And we want you guys not to forget those because those are so heavily tested like on SAT and ACTs. So we're spiraling these into, and you will see these on the test, so make sure that you do brush up on them to make sure that you're good to go with um, calculator and non-calculator work with them. So here we go. A food makes a six pound mixture of walnuts. So we have walnuts, cashews, and dates. And the cost of walnuts is 150 per pound. The cashews is, so let me put that right here, $150, $1, and then $150 for the dates. All right, so the mixture calls for twice as many walnuts as cashews. So if I have walnuts and I have cashews, there's twice as many walnuts as there is cashews. So if I have 10, I have 20. If I had 15 cashews, I would have twice as many, which I would have 30 walnuts. So this is a good way to build um, what the equation is going to look like because the equation is not going to be like um, 2w is equal to c. That's not what it's going to be because if I put, let's say, um, 5 here for w, then it would be 5 times 2 is 10, which means that I would have 5 w's for every 10 cashews. And that's not the way that this is written. Okay, it's not. This is backwards. So, and we experienced this a lot when we were doing systems of equations. We have to be careful. Where do we put this to? Okay, and the way that we can see that is by doing like test numbers and see where is the one doubled. So if it's doubled over here on the right side, we want to put 2C would equal W. And we can test it because let's say that C was, let's say, 5. If C was 5, then plugging in 5 right here would multiply by 2 to get me 10, which is what this would equal all by itself. So when there are 5 cashews and I multiply it by 2, I would get 10 walnuts. Just like if I were to say C is 10, I plugged it in here in this equation, 10 times 2 would yield an answer of 20 walnuts on the other side. Okay, so you have to be careful and do like test point checks with that so that we developed just now that W is equal to 2C. Okay, twice, the mixture calls for twice as many walnuts as cashews. Be careful. That's how we see 
twice as many walnuts as cashews. That means we have to each cashew multiply by two in order to see what this number would be, which again would be twice as many as what those cashews started off to be. And again, just refer to these numbers, do some test points to check them out, and you can develop that equation. Or you can go against your intuition, because the intuition says you want to do 2w equals c, and just go against it and put w equals 2c, and then try it out, put some numbers in there. I could say like, let's say I had, I don't know, 100 cashews. If I had 100 cashews, then 100 times 2 would give me 200 walnuts which is twice as many walnuts as I have cashews. So this equation works. So the total cost of the mixture is $8.50. So that means $1.50 times W plus a dollar, and you could just put one or just leave it as C, because that's the coefficient, just one. And then $1.50D, all of these added together and notice how I multiplied them with their cost for each one. This is an understood $1. I'm going to match that up with the dollar amount. Okay, so we have a dollar basically equation. Okay, how much of each ingredient did the store use? Okay, so over here we have W is equal to 2C. And then we have this equation here. We do have three variables, so we do need at least three equations to get us going okay and here is where the last equation comes from so talking about pounds or weight this is a six pound mixture so we're saying walnuts plus cashews plus dates would give me six pounds so this is like lb an abbreviation for uh, the unit of measure for pounds and now we have our three equations we have the one that's dealing with money. We have the one that's dealing with, um, usually it's like the number of items, but in this case, it's talking about weight, okay? All equally in that six pounds. Let me circle that a little bit better. And then the last one right here, as far as just comparing two of these variables to each other, okay? And the reason why we do this is because now we can use this as far as to help build what our equation is going to look like. All right, so let's go ahead and start trying to solve this system, system of equations by doing elimination method or doing, um, we could do an augmented matrix as far as um, a three by four system. Let's go ahead and um, first start with possibly setting up a matrix, okay? So a matrix that we could just plug into the calculator and it would solve it for us, okay? So if I'm looking at this and I'm thinking of my variables W, C, D, and the number, I'm about to build a three by four matrix, three rows by four columns. So in this one, I'll put the Ws, so we could put um, something like 1.5. We could put 1. And then this one right here, this weird equation where we had a comparison, we can set it up by subtracting 2C over to the left and writing something that looks like that. So now W is 1 for that one. We have a negative 2C. And then we have no D, so 0D units right there. And then we'll have zero for a number over here. Okay, so now let's move back up to this middle equation. We have one for W, we have one for C, we have one for D, and we have six for the number. And then last but not least, our money equation was $1.50, which we can put 1.5. We could put one here. We could put $1.50 for D, and we could put $8.50. Yes, if you want to add those zeros, you may. So now when we do the row reduced echelon form and we solve this with parentheses, it should give us that identity matrix with the actual solution at hand. That means it will do all of those steps that we were doing with Gaussian elimination and give us 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 
zero, zero, one, possibly, if there is an answer, and then these three numbers, whatever it gives us, would in fact be our answer. So there'd be a number there, a number here, and a number there, okay? So this is how we set it up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and type it into the calculator right now and see what would the answer spit out, okay? So let me go ahead and move over to my calculator real quick. And we're going to go ahead and go to row reduced. So R, R, E, F. We'll put parentheses. Then we will open up a matrix. So we press this button here. Go to the three by three. And we're going to say three rows by four columns. And then press OK. And now we're just going to put in this matrix right here as we see it. So I took a picture with my phone and I have 1.50. I have 1, 1.50, I have 8.50, and then over here I have 1, 1, 1, 6 pounds, and then I have 1, negative 2, whoops, and on these I had a 0 and a 0. And you see, I get my identity matrix, and it's 2, 1, 3 as far as my answers are concerned. So 2, 1, 3 is what belongs here, here, and here. Since this W was mentioned first, the answers would be first here. Since the second one was C, this one is going to be C. And the third one was D, the third one here will be D. So if it says how much of each ingredient did the store use, we're going to say it used two pounds of walnuts. Okay, so we'll say walnuts two pounds the cashews looks like it was one pound and then the dates looks like it was three pounds and sure enough these add up to six pounds okay and I can check it because the walnuts were a dollar fifty each so if there's two pounds of those walnuts that's going to be three dollars for the walnuts the cashews were one dollar each and since we only have one pound, it's going to be one dollar. And then the dates, they were a dollar fifty each pound, and we got three pounds of that. So a dollar fifty times three would give us four fifty. And sure enough, if I added up all of these, I would get eight dollars and fifty cents. So they do, they match up not only the cost, they do the um, pounds as well. And then last but not least, I can come over here and check this equation. If I have one for my cashews and I have two for walnuts, it does make sense. Two times one would give me two. So they do satisfy all the conditions. Okay, so there's, your, um, there's a way that you could do this, or this is an example of how you could set this up with a row reduced echelon form. Now, if we did this by hand, and we were looking at trying to solve for either W, C, or D, we could use um, this equation to do this by hand. And let me show you how we would do that. So I showed you what the answers are going to be. Now let's work backwards and kind of do this by hand. If we know W is 2C, what we can do is what we can do is we can replace these W's with 2C. So where this W used to be, I can now put like a 2C. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'd have 2C, 2C. It's like substitution. So 2C times 150 would be 3C plus the rest of this stuff plus C plus 150D is equal to 850. Since I have 3C plus C, I could add these together and make them 4C. And now you see I only have two variables now. Over here, this W that I made into a 2C when I add it with this one will become 3C plus D is equal to six. And again, now I have a system of equations, a two by three, just with two variables. 
And what we can do if we, we could do substitution or we could do elimination to basically find one of these values, okay? What I'm gonna do um, just for the, the how common we should use elimination, I'm gonna show you with elimination of how you could do this. So I'm gonna multiply the bottom of the equation by a negative $1.50. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it will match up with this D and give me a negative 150 that I will add together and be able to cancel this to zero. Okay, so negative 150 times 3 is a negative 450. C. When I distribute it over here, I get a negative dollar and fifty cents D. And when I distribute it on this last one, six, it's like having six of these dollar fifties. I know two would be $3, so therefore four would be $6, and therefore six would be $9. So this is going to be like a negative nine. You're on the very far right. And nothing happened to this top equation. All we did was manipulate the bottom one. Because, again, I'll show you here in just a bit, when I add these, these are going to cancel to zero. So I'm left with 4 plus a negative 450 will be a negative 50 cents C. And then I have 850 plus a negative $9 is going to be like a negative 0 0.50, like negative 50 cents. And now I can solve basically by dividing both sides by a negative 0 0.50. Then I'm left with C. And over here, a negative 0 0.50, I'm left with 1. And we see that right here, cashews, there's only one. And now I can plug it into this equation. Two times one is going to give me two, so I should have two walnuts. And now that I have two and one here, I can even go back to my original equation. Let me undo this little piece right here where it, said, where it used to say walnuts. And I can basically, I plugged in, or I can plug in two for walnuts one for cashews, so that I can find out what would the D for dates equal. So 3 plus D, oops, 3 plus D would equal 6. And sure enough, I subtract 3, D would equal 3. So that's how you can do it by hand as well. Substitution, elimination. Make sure that you do check this out and rewind if you need to, just to re, and even look at your notes from last unit because you will see these on the test for sure. Okay, last but not least, we have number 24. Whoops, let me erase some of this so we can read the problem better. All right, so number 24 is another system. A food store makes a nine pound mixture of barley, flakes, and nuts. So already we can say barley plus flakes plus nuts is equal to nine pounds. The cost of barley is 150. So we could say 150 of barley plus flakes is $2. So we could say 2, 2F. And again, on this 150, you don't need that zero, okay? You could put 1.5 and you're still gonna get the same answer. 2F and then $2 for the nuts. So you could put 2N is equal to the total cost of $16. And then not, last but not least, the mixture calls for twice as much barley as flakes. So it feels like it should be this from the way we just read it. But again, let's go against this intuition and let's say 2F is equal to B. And now we can just check it. If F was 10, 2 times 10 would give us 20. Okay, now look at that. The mixture calls for twice as much barley as flakes, in which that makes sense. There's 20 barley for every 10 flakes, so that's twice as much. So going against that intuition and checking it with test points definitely, definitely does pay off. So B is equal to 2F. 
And again, what you can do from here, if you want, you can make these two Bs substituted with F, okay? Or 2F, that is. So you could change this B and this B to 2F. And then you can add these to get, here we go, you could add those Fs to get 3F plus N is equal to 9. You could add these Fs together and get 3.5, oops, I'm sorry, 1.5 times 2 is 3. And then 3 plus 2 is 5. So it's 5Fs plus 2N is equal to 16. And then even from here, you can do um, a system of equations if you wanted to. Okay, so I did it on purpose that way because I wanted to remind you of the other way that I showed you of how to do the systems of equations. So let me, I just took a picture of this piece right here. Oops. And I'm going to go to the calculator and show you what we used to do last unit. So menu, algebra, 7 for solve the system, 1 for the system of equations. I do have one equation, or sorry, two equations, and I'm going to go from that one that I circled at the bottom. I'm going to say um, 3F. Let me change this to F and this to N. Okay, so what I have that I took a picture of was that 3F plus N is equal to 9. And then I have 5F, so again, you can change those letters. 5F plus 2N is equal to 16. So we get F is 2 and N is 3. Okay, so F is 2 and N is 3. And if we wanted to, we could go back to our original equations and undo these things that we used to call Barley's. So that we can use this equation in our new findings and say that b is or b plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 9. So that's b plus 5 is equal to 9. If I subtract the 5, the barley should equal 4. And this is my equation. Okay. Now let me go ahead, or this these are my answers. So we have what? Two flakes three nuts and four barley, it looks like A is going to be the answer, okay? And again, what we could have done here, we could have even used that program that I just showed you with these three equations, okay? So I just boxed these three equations. I'm gonna take a picture of this now. I'm gonna go back to the calculator and do menu 371, but this time I'm gonna put three equations, okay? So the picture that I took, of is of all of these three right here okay so let me come over here and i'm going to put on this there we go i'm going to put b f and n and i'm just going to type them in exactly the way i set them up b plus f plus n equal those nine pounds okay the second equation was the cost function, 1.5B plus 2F plus 2N is equal to 16. And then the last one was B is equal to 2F, that one that we went against our intuition. And sure enough, we got B is 4, F is 2, and N is 3, just like what we got over here. So there's a lot of different variations and ways that you can do this. Just wanted to give you a little bit of variations of how you could use the calculator, but also remember how to do it by hand. So those are 21 to 24.